das wird so. It's half past eight, Saturday night, and we're sober, which is, for some of us, it took a long time to get there. Good evening to everyone. Um, what I was thinking about this this, this afternoon, hi Marshall, and uh, Rian, and what I was thinking about this afternoon was, you know, how we get addicted, what we're addicted to, and... <laughs> <clears throat> There's so many things that we can talk about. We can, you, you know, we can start without the drugs and the alcohol, and we can talk about things like people are addicted to stealing. Well, just look at our government. People are addicted to farm murders. Look how they've been butchered and killed. You know, people are, are addicted to, to, to many things that... Um, have an impact on society. And, and once that impact on society takes place, it becomes a matter of where do we go for our different addictions. Now, 15 years ago, this this week coming up, I was gone. At, it, I was at the depths of, of uh, loneliness, depression, despair. And, you know, I had been to... to that they weren't rehabilitation centers like Stickland and Falkenberg and being dried out cells and dried out for four days, five days, and then let the puppy gets let out from a um, from his kennel. And uh, it was a battle. I tell you, night no, it, it it was an absolute battle <coughs> to get to the point of of surrender. And I find today's uh, youth struggle to get to the point of surrender. They want to know and want to see, you know, I'm, I'm 20 years old, but I still want to get married and I still want to have champagne at my wedding and I still want to have a beer, but I've been on tuck, so I don't have to, have to worry because beer is different. And uh, the degree that, that you see the gift of desperation for wanting recovery. You know, there's, there's, there's different variations of do I want recovery because I want long-lasting recovery? Do I want to? If anyone had said to me when I stopped, hey, you'll be 15 years sober next week, I would have said, okay, yeah, let's maybe, maybe not. But I find today that the, the gift of desperation is slowly going. You know, we, we, we get to a point where we are being allowed to manipulate our parents. Our parents are, are and I see it all the time, so I'm not talking crap to you. Our parents are being held hostage as prisoners by their children. If the child doesn't like something, then he will kick up a fuss and rock his shoulders up and go out and use. If he doesn't like something at a, at a rehabilitation center or any rehab, doesn't have to be my rehab, any rehab, then he wants to run away. And that was my life. Always running away. You know, when I used to run away and then get to Johannesburg and then run to Durban, run to East London, run to Port Elizabeth. And, um, but only re when I got onto the streets and, and, and living on the streets did I realize, hey, but I'm running with myself the whole time. I'm, I'm actually there running, but I'm with myself running. And I had to take a point where, where I really, really feel that today's youth Maybe it's, 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 it's because we're a bit older, but, but let me just say it like it is. I think today's youth are under more pressure than we were in our day. We've got the advent of the cell phone. We've got the advent of the internet. We've got the advent of, of everything that is, uh, that is at the tip of your, your fingers. I was explaining to them the other night in the meeting. I said, you know, when we went out with a girl or we did some, or, or wanted to do something, we had to walk like five kilometers to the ticket box and phone. And when you got to the ticket box, Michelle will know what I'm talking about. When you, when you get to the ticket box and you get there and it's not, it's not working, then you have to walk the five kilometers or the three kilometers back. If we needed some information, we went to the library. 
Now we just click on two, three letters and it pops up in our face. So it's all made to, to make us instant gratification. And the drugs and the alcohol is exactly the same when it comes to instant gratification. Instant gratification is almost, is almost the hallmark of drug and alcohol addiction. We get up at night. How much in South Africa and the world tonight? How many men are getting pissed and beating their wives up? How many men are getting drugged and beating their wives? We had a call the other night of an 81 year old man being beaten up by his grandson because he would not give him money for drugs now the natural instinct of the of the of the flesh is to say okay let's go through to the northern suburbs of of out of this guy you can't do that man. we know this is an illness but when you start pushing the point and stretching the point we must realize that our loved ones are held hostage while we're in addiction. They're held hostage when we when when we come out of a rehab center or we get or we get clean because they're living in fear that something is going to happen that will spark and they will then think, okay, well it is for me to blame. Many parents say to me, Anthony, where did I go wrong? Especially mothers. Huh? Never there's no greater love than the love of a mother. No greater love. And I've experienced that my whole love of a mother. And where did I go wrong? You didn't go wrong anywhere. You did not go wrong. Mothers and fathers must realize they did not go wrong. They may have done things. Like my, my, my dad may have done things that, that, was, that was wrong. But that wasn't, um, that didn't give me the license to go out there and do something and pick up my drug and pick up my alcohol for the first time. The... Sorry, there's people who are sending messages when you're doing a meeting, but anyway, they didn't know. There are many things to take into, into consideration when you are in recovery. Recovery is not a treatment center. This is just purely, basically, the start of the, of the, of the long race, and the long road to freedom is a recovery center. Then when we go out there, we start living it, and we need to take certain precautions of guys go out on a high and they're doing well and and um you, you all know graham is coming up against all odds graham is coming up five years sober richard was two years 11 months sober yesterday tank was 11 months angus is three years sober so a lot of people are are finding recovery and sustaining recovery that is the big part of it because you can find it. You can get the key back to the house. Mommy will give you a car. Mommy will give you a, a, a cell phone. You will get the, your favorite food every night, etc., etc., etc. But when they leave the rehabilitation center, boundaries have to be drawn. There has to be boundaries and say, okay, well, this is the boundary. This is the consequence. But we, we don't often see that because... People want to keep the peace. And a lot of things you find are torn apart. Mothers and fathers are torn apart because the son loves the chaos. And he can walk through the middle of the chaos between the arguments between the mom and the dad. And then he can justify why he's going to use. And then he will get what he wants to get. And it doesn't work that way. So we as, we as parents... We as parents, definitely, Jackie, online gaming, any addiction, any addiction. You know, they, 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 they're opening up things now that um, I, I can tell you tonight. I just saw Jackie tell you tonight. We, we're not only living in an insane country. We're living with insane people who are leading this country. Our backs are against the wall. And I think the only solution to that is the firm belief in God and trusting God that he knows where he's going to take us. He knows who he's going to protect. 
How is he going to protect us? Because the world has gone insane. The story is insanity. So when we, just to get back to, to, to where I'm going to here tonight, is when we, we've had the hard times and we've got, got a bit of sobriety, we then have to stay sober. The staying sober part of it is that I need to go to meetings. I need to go to AA meetings. I need to go to Narcotics Anonymous meetings. But I AA meetings. That's just my, my, my preference because I find out people have got a bit more sobriety there. I don't go to meetings to look at the chicks. I don't go to meetings because I, I've got nothing to do at 8 o'clock at night. I go to meetings to recharge my battery so I won't use my substance or any other substance that's going to further destroy me, my family, and my friends. That are close to me. If we if we have uh, if we still have friends left, we put too much we put too much emphasis and entitlement on our youth. When I'm talking about our youth, I'm talking about the odd people. You know, we got a section here at uh, at Rail, the Corona um, the Corona Lodge. It's actually called Corona Square, on the other side of the farm. Where people who've come in during this this time, they all got their, their separate entrances and they all got their own places and they all go shower separately and all those kind of things. And you look at this and you think to yourself, and two had come from prison as well, and you think to yourself, where has it all gone wrong? Because I will promise my mother and my father anything. When I was drinking, I used to promise them the world. Anthony, will you stop? I'll stop. And that, how long will that promise last? Even when I was on the streets, how long did that promise last? Mm -hmm. Eventually, my mom. Eventually, my mom has be, had to me out the house and put me on the streets so I could see. Well, hey, hold it. Of the road was nigh. So by going to meetings, I'm recharging my batteries. You can see people. And to go into church, people who, who come into recovery, they leave recovery, they're feeling good, they're feeling pumped up. And a lot of people who, most people who leave recovery have got, um, they put on good weight. And they, that is not addiction recovery. Addiction recovery is from inside out. You have to empty the filth. So when you go out there, all the filth has gone. So you can continue with a new life. The garbage bag has to be emptied. It's no use coming and looking like Arnold Schwarzenegger when you leave here, but the garbage bag inside is filthy. It's just not going to work. First things first. First things first. A lot of, pe a lot of parents come to me and say, oh, my son is looking so well. I say, yes, mommy, he's looking well. But we have to deal with the inside, man. If he's not doing his step work or he's not or, or, or he's taking his step work for a joke, then we're in serious trouble. Then we've got a problem. So we, we need to go to meetings and we need to work the steps and take the step seriously. We need to hand our life over to the care of God. We need to take a moral inventory. We need to do a step five. We need to continue. I'm cured. way and a design for life so you have to try and do it every day did i offend someone did i do wrong did i did i harm someone must i make amends to this? did i say my prayers did i read my bible there's various things in the steps every single day that we have to live them i went to alcoholics anonymous when i when i put down my drink 15 years ago and I sat there and I listened to men who were not only older than me, but had years and years of sobriety. Today, I'm sad to say, not many of them are left. Most of them have passed on to the big meeting in the sky. And there's not a lot of sobriety running around. People lose the passion to stay sober. 
they wait for an opportunity to use. Or they think if they sober a year or two, they can pick up some substance and the, the result is going to be different. Nothing changes if nothing changes. And the only thing that is constant is change. Nothing else. So you need to have a love and a desire to want to change. Children need to be put in their school and put in their place that this is your, my parents and this is, your, or this is your parents and a bit of respect. We need to restore morals. And that's not morals only for the addict. That's morals for the country. Values for the country. Because in this world at the moment, it seems like anyone, we can do whatever we like. Only some people's lives matter, but other people's lives don't matter. Children look at that and they think, ah, well, lekker, it's party time, we can do what we like, etc., etc., etc. But they don't look at the bigger picture of what is happening. We're fighting for our lives on more fronts than one. For those of us who, who, who are addicted and, and been addicted, etc., we're fighting just another battle. But there's a world out there fighting another battle. There's moms and dads fighting a battle. Is are the engines in this place, bro? There's moms and dads fighting a battle whether they're going to keep their home next month. There's moms and dads fighting a battle. Do they have the finances to support themselves and their family? That's what's happening in this country. That's what's happening in this world. Because everything comes down to a few little think they can run us and our people. So when our youngsters go out and the joint comes around, what do they do? They think, stuff this, we've got no respect for the police because we see the police in the drug dens with us. So if the police can do it, why can't I do it? You're not going to touch me. And what has astounded me in this, in this country in the last while is the lack of backbone of our nation. The lack of backbone of our men who do not stand up. It takes one to make a difference. Who do not stand up and try and make a change. We are being laughed at. I see youngsters coming here. One youngster came to me today. He says he's been here for a little couple of days. And the the doctor was here as well. We were having a meeting. And he said to me, oh, Mr. Hall, um, I'll never use drugs again. I'm fine. I've never heard such shit in my life. I should get to know this entitlement. They think their parents are paying money and they're coming here for a holiday. Then they and get a he, she or something. It's that desperation what I'm talking about here tonight. That desperation. The desperation of a, na of a nation standing on the edge and we don't know which way to do. Political correctness has killed our country. Political correctness is busy killing the world. Because if someone says, oh, do you support that just to keep the friendship or keep... Uh, Everyone going and, and, and you don't want to lose a friend. Yeah, I support that. We haven't taken a stand for what we believe in. Because we're falling for everything. But we're standing for nothing. So to compromise. To compromise. We're going to say, oh, well, I support that. When they came out with the legislation of, of the herb. You know the holy herb. That puts you into a different planet. I fought that. And the court saw good to, to pass that legislation. What are our kids doing now? They all grow in their own little stash of herb and they're competing who can grow the strongest herb. Ask any doctor who's got any brains what is causing the most schizophrenia at the moment. Dacha. We have a lot of people coming in here with drug-induced schizophrenia. But people think it's the gentle 
her because it's been sold like that, mainly by the mainstream media, who couldn't care two craps about us, you or me. You know, we, we, we want to go and walk our dogs. And just before I came on here, I was, I was reading again about the farm murders. You know, whether they, they happen in the suburbs, which won't be a farm murder, but the murders, we are living in the sphere. Uh, our parents, if we still got them alive, those of us who have parents alive, in the sphere. And I tell the boys every night, how are you meant to look after your parents? If you Who's going to look after your parents? Who's going to look after them when they get old? Where's the morals and the values and the respect and the discipline? Young kids, I see it, are treating their mothers like they're friends. And it all comes down to our, our upbringing, and we're all brought up well, but our respect and our discipline for each other. Addiction recovery is not just about, hey, I want to get sober. It's about a whole change of life. I can't be in addiction recovery for thick, but the whole day I'm going to carry on watching pornography. Sorry, this is uh, camera lights. They're about 28 trying to drag. Um, for those who smoke, another thing. Yes, you know it's an addiction, but it doesn't make my life unmanageable. But why should one person dictate whether 11 million people want to smoke or not? We've been bound, and this is what happens in addiction recovery. Our children get bound, and then they go from the dope. And sometimes they start with a tick straight away. I was speaking to Graham yesterday, and I said, Graham, I've known you for five years. Just tell me a bit about yourself. Just like the ins and outs. Because I know all about him, what he's done. He's a naughty little bastard. But very proud of him. Because sometimes he goes across on all fours on the, on the, um, in the lounger. And he thinks he's a dog when he's playing with the dogs. But it's all liquor. And uh, he said the first time that he smoked heroin, he got hooked. The first time this young man smoked heroin, he got hooked, and now he couldn't leave it, couldn't leave it behind. So our children, and unfortunately to say, and this is close to my heart, we have a drugged and addicted youth. Then we have the middle class who are doing what they like, etc., what's happening to them, and then we're wiping out our elderly and our farmers. It's a systematic destruction of the human race of South Africa and the world. It's not easy, it's not difficult to work it out. Because it's so easy to control our drug youth. Because we're not worried about when we're drugging, we're not worried about what's happening in the world. We're worried about when we, where we're going to get our next fix. I remember being, when I was on the streets, I wasn't worried where, where I really was going to sleep because it would be in some doorway or... The beach in Durban wasn't bad actually in the summer. But um, I was worried about where I was going to get my next drink. <laughs> Thanks, Renee. Where I'm going to get my next drink. Our kids, I've had parents in here that tell me that they've got trelly doors on the entrance to their bedroom because their kids want to come in and take everything from their house. Now, this is how an addict operates, especially a youngster. He will steal his mother and father blind. Everything will be gone. Because he knows mommy and daddy are not going to lock him up, even though he's suffering from an illness. But remember, you can be a criminal first and an addict afterwards. Big distinction. He will then, after he's crippled them blind and financially and mentally, that dad is on the drink, he's on the parents, because I, excuse my language here, I fucked with my parents big time for 25 years. I just, 
So they steal that blind. I never stole in the essence of stole anything from my parents. But nothing that I can't replace. Everything else we steal, people steal can be replaced. I stole the time that I had with my parents. That's what I stole. I stole time. And it breaks me to this day. To this day, I, 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 could, I could be at the point of, of, I'm 56 years old. And there's not a day that goes by. And I'm not, it's not regrets or self-pity or anything. Realizing what I did to my mother and to my father. When I went next door here, or not next door, in the, in, in the room next door, just before I came on air, when did I kiss my mom goodnight? Mom's getting frail, mom's getting old. And I think, yo, all the times when mom would just say to me, Anthony, don't you want to just take me to the wimpy to go have a sandwich? I was too busy drinking. I was too busy with friends. And when the wallet is empty, the friends are empty. Mommy and daddy, and then they go down the road to Uncle Johnny, and they try to steal from Uncle Johnny. And then they go and steal from the wrong person, and then mothers and fathers are phoned. Please come and bail your son out. It's a whole pattern of destruction. For parents to live, I'll get to that now, Michelle. For parents to live, and they have to put a trellis door on their bedroom door, is insanity. For people to, to be honestly, well, let me put it this way. For any human being, to be I'm sorry. That just doesn't cut water. Because we got feelings. And why I'm so strong on the parents tonight is because I received two phone calls from parents today that have lost the plot and said, Anthony, I'm, I'm, I feel like taking my life or taking theirs. Please take my son. And they can't afford to be here place is very limited i'd love to take the world in but i can't when i first came into this recovery i thought i could change the whole world and i could i could i could save the whole world but i first had to save and then save the whole world we need to put discipline back and it starts in the schools as well every school has got a drug dealer every school maybe has got two or three drugs drug dealers and I'm talking about the Model C schools of, of, of South Africa as well as the private schools. That the private schools have got more because they've got more money. I know that because I talk at these schools. And we have people who come just after school, after matric, into the center. That's what happens at these schools. You know, we, the gratitude of having our parents, of having our mom and dad. I didn't have that gratitude when I was younger because I thought my mother and father would live forever. But today, when, when the, the young men come in here with about 15 earrings in every part of their body, okay, that's their choice, they can do whatever they like. But the way they speak to their parents in front of me, and I will tell them straight, listen here, you little bit. If you think you're going to do it here, you may as well take your stuff and fuck off out of my house. Because you're not going to disrespect your parents in front of me. You can go disrespect in front of me or in front of my leadership. Because you need a, not even a club. You just need discipline, my brother. Because you've been taking, it's easy to, 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 to manipulate, be dishonest. Treat our mothers and fathers like absolute dirt when we're on the stuff or when we're trying to just get more stuff and more stuff into us. That's insanity. 
And, and if I can beg parents, test your children. You know, uh, I've seen it a lot that parents have said to me, Anthony, I'm too frightened to test my child. Spare my feelings, save my child. Rather test your child now and let them hate you for two days or two weeks than run from rehab to rehab to rehab. Because once you takes that first drag of a drug all to hell not only for himself but for you too yes, thanks AD yeah clear there you go just confirming what I said we are under an avalanche of drugs you something over the whole the whole of South Africa and call it rehab because we've all been in rehab for the last three months haven't we we didn't call it rail they call it lockdown headed by greedy Mrs. Zuma but anyway that's a topic for another time then we talk about our law enforcement the way they've chased the cigarettes in the last two months is a hey, commendable let's give them a a naughty badge. Why don't they do the same with the drug dealers? I'll tell you why I'm an ex-narcotics squad. Drug dealers pay policemen. That's why. There's no other reason, man. For everyone on here, there's no other reason. It's not that the, the <clears throat> there's some beautiful cops, a lot of cops are my friends, but they don't go to the drug dealer, the child from the crash. They go to the drug dealer to pick up their payment. Now, is that a lack of, 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 of salary for the police? So they're complicit in the assassination of our children, the law enforcement, the Justice Department. For maybe one stop or one this and one that. And they go to prison. And they get treated like pigs. And they come out hardened boys. You get taught more there than anywhere else. <laughs> Addiction is... It's a lonely business when you go out and all you're looking for is that drink or that drug. I did it for 20 years. At the end, what was never to be to get high... It was just try to function, just try to to get to a point where you, where you, where you can, maybe even walk properly, where the shakes can stop. I used to have the DT so bad that, for people that know me, I've got elephants all over my home here on the farm. Everyone who knows me well, at Christmas, <coughs> excuse me, Angie, is there anything to drink there besides alcohol, brother? That go. Uh, I used to see pink elephants coming out the walls. I used to, they used to walk over me, the small ones. I know it's insane. That's why I've got elephants all over. People, like I said, who know me well, come Christmas time, I know, here comes another 10 elephants. Whether it's a key ring or whether it's a beautiful big statue, I helped them. And he gave me this massive elephant from stone, most beautiful, beautiful thing. It's a reminder. It's an icon in my life. Do I want to go back? And that's what I try and tell our, our people who come in here and when we go talk around the country. Do I want to go back to that life? Do I want to go to the life where you're lying in a padded cell and they cut and jab you in the ass? Three hours later, they come again and jab you and they put you out and then again. And that's just the process for three days. Where you just lie out, gone to the world. Our young girls who are prostituting themselves tonight. There's a tendency now to, and I'm going to say it as it is because that's who I am. That some of the men that has come into this farm join a website that is only for men, only mainly for married men, only mainly for married men, and then they go. 
instead of going to steal, they go and sell their bodies for drugs. It's called country.com. That is what is happening. That is what is happening to our youth. If our parents knew exactly what we got up to, hi Duncan, if our parents knew exactly what, what we got up to, they'd be shocked, mad. They'd be shocked completely out of their minds. Anything. Even though we are lonely in this addiction and we're surrounded by people who loved us, mothers and fathers love us. They love us with all they got. What do they really want? They just want their child back and they want their child back. The drug from America, the drug, there's a batch of cocaine that has come in full of fentanyl. And uh, for those of you who know fentanyl, it's a, it's a killer. And more people sadly will succumb to that even tonight. Our boys who are selling their, their bodies on the streets in Africa tonight. Our girls. How far are they prepared to go? Thank you, Angus. How far are they prepared to go to get their drug? This is the unfortunate part. This is the, the behind the call in the drugs. This is what the drugs are making us do. When you hear boys come in here, and I'm being very straight and very honest here tonight because I'm actually a bit hot full of all this crap that our country is going down the drain and so is our children. When you start sleeping with animals, you know our country is sick. And the drugs are making them sicker. Sicker by the day. So when you find people who are coming to come into around and they've got two years, three years, five years sobriety. It gives because our children don't want to realize the consequences. They will they will do what they want to do until those consequences come. Yeah you know, many people have said Anthony write a book. I've written some of it. But it'll probably be get me thrown in jail or or shot in the head. Because there are advocates, CEOs, Springbok rugby players that are using this stuff. The so-called role models of society. It's a never-ending of drugs. Are people using drugs and alcohol just to escape? I know when Graham told me, he said, when I used heroin, it just numbed me. It just made me feel. And every four hours I had to go numb. Can't have a job when you're on heroin. You can have a job when you're on tick for a while and you're eventually going to lose it. You're going to, you won't be able to keep it. We can meant to play the big shot in cheap bar rooms. And that's what I used to be. When I used to have quite a lot of money and I used to go in bar rooms and try and buy friends. But those friends were never there when the wallet was empty. And then you go out and you look and you end up like me as a burgie on the streets for two years. Faithless, hopeless and down and out. Angie, just give me the just for today, please. Where do we go to as far as our children go? We can't keep them under lock and key. You know, I've got a 15-year-old daughter, and um, I ask the mother all the time, how's my daughter? Is there any signs of it? But I can guarantee you, my daughter is just, just as susceptible to using drugs and going through all the shit as any other girl. That is the frightening part, man. Like I said the other night, when our, our loved ones are going to rave parties, they're not going to eat popcorn. 
They're not going to eat hot dogs. We have to make sure where our, where our children go to. And I know that's a difficult task. It's a difficult order, especially with modern technology. It's, it's hard. But the horrendous stories of, we, of what we are seeing every day By the grace of God, if he spares me for another seven, eight days to make 15 years of sobriety, there aren't many left. Because I knew that if I took my foot off the pedal, I would go back to the alcohol and the drugs. And I would then put myself into a box. When I was using alcohol and drugs, I was dead, but I wasn't buried yet. We become dead to the world. Are becoming dead to the world. Our children are not bad children. Eh? You parents brought us all up well. I'm glad when you're another against all odds amazing man. Keep it going. But it's so easy to slip. It's so easy when, when mothers come here and tell me, you know, my son lies in bed the, the whole day. The whole day. Doesn't work. The whole day. Plays TV games. Watches pornography. Mother serves the meal. The plate gets put on the, on the floor. Mother comes and picks it up. And he just carries on. Have we become a fatherless society? I will get any person by the grace of God right with respect, morals, values, and discipline. Because you respect yourself and you've got morals and you've got values and you've got discipline, you're not going to use drugs anymore. There's no person that we won't get right. But that person must want to get right. That person must want to choose the way that is not the easier, softer way. That person must if I'm going to, that, that's another trend that we find here. Is guys that are making young girls pregnant because they come from affluent families. It's so true. It's one of my favorite sayings at Sarah. When we baby the addict, we bury the addict. So what is happening behind the scenes, like I said, is sad. We're busy losing a nation. We're busy losing a nation of, of, of the next generation. And sadly, those who are alcohol and drugs who are addicted become weak. And we see it every day. And then we see the success stories. And we just thank God these days for the success stories. Because drugs and alcohol, we're on a little farm here in Worcester. Drugs and alcohol are so easily available. I know I'm moving around from different points tonight because I didn't have a, a subject for tonight. I felt like talking what is on my heart and what comes into my heart. I did say about the parents that phoned me today because when you can't help all the parents and the parents aren't young. But they've been caught up as hostages. They've been caught up in of filth and evil. And how do they get out of it? There is no government help. You can't go to a rehabilitation center for six weeks. One a rehab for three three weeks and think you're gonna recover. That's a joke. And pay eighty thousand Rand at a at a private rehab. Can't do the can't do the 12 steps in those, in those minutes. So, uh, those weeks, not at all. I'm just going to read you something from the just for today. Just for everyone that is here. And it's the 21st of June. We have become experts at self-deception. And rationalization. And self accept all the time. When we come to our first meeting and hear that we must be honest, we may think, well now, 
That shouldn't be too difficult. Honesty is the keystone. We have to become honest in all our affairs. And it has to be rigorous honesty. If children who are, or youngsters who are watching this, you got a problem, go to your mother and father. Go to your mom and dad and say, I've got a problem. All I have to stop lying. <laughs> to some of us, this comes easily. We no longer have to lie to our employees about our absence from work. My mother used to phone on a Monday. Often I used to say, Mom, please phone my boss and tell him that I've got diarrhea or back pain or headache or whatever, that I can't make it to work today. My mom would phone and then one day she said, You know what, Anthony? I'm not going to lie for you anymore. Because all I'm doing is enabling you. It's Father's Day. Any fathers online here? Beautiful. We need to lie to our families about when we were, where we were the night before. That was the worst part. You go out, you get drunk, you get drugged. And then you come home one or two days later and you lie in bed and you think, oh God, don't telephone ring. You see the, you, you hear, you can hear the police fan, you hear the police fan going past. It's anxiety. But yet again, three or four days later, we will continue it. We will continue it. I remember being, being in the drug squad in the police. Into the murder and robbery unit. And thought I knew how to drink until I got there. And then I was with older men. I was the youngest in the murder and robbery in, in KwaZulu Natal. And that's why I went learned to drink. With courage, determined practice, the support, and with the help of God, most of us eventually succeed as this kind of honesty. Honesty, though, that is truly indispensable in recovery is self-honesty which is neither easy nor simple to achieve in our addiction we create a form of self-deception and rationalization a whirlwind of lies in which the small quiet voice of self-honesty could not be heard to be honest with ourselves we must first stop lying to ourselves we must become quiet. Then in the resulting stillness, we must listen for the truth. When we become silent, self we find. And that's what we find wherever we go around and talk to, to people who and go and do interventions with family. It's the denial part. Mama only use on weekends. Well, Mom, I haven't, I haven't used for weeks. I haven't used for months. It's the denial. But this has gone missing. That's gone missing. I think if you had to take everything that was being stolen and missing out of, a, out of our parents' houses through all their drugging careers, you could fill up game about 5,000 times. There's much more to it. Quickly, quickly, just touch on the steps. Graham, just give me that big... And say to people, you know, we often think that it's just drugs and alcohol. He's got a drug and alcohol problem, but it runs far deeper than that. It runs far deeper than the alcohol and drug problem. I just want to read page 58, and then uh, next week we'll have... Want to, who want to share and um, we will have a topic but for a Saturday night you know when I thought okay we, we, we're going to come online there wasn't a specific topic maybe those, those parents spurred me on 
But I just want to get across there that our country's in a lot of trouble. Our youth are under siege. Under big siege. And we have to do everything possible to protect them. We have to stand up and... Um, We can't surrender now. We can't surrender our children to evil. And I know it's difficult. But that is what is happening at the moment. And this is what I'm going to read to you now. It's read at every meeting in the world of Alcoholics Anonymous. Rarely have we seen a, a person fail who has thoroughly followed our path. Those who do not recover are people who cannot or will not completely give themselves to the simple program. Usually men and women who are constitutionally in with themselves. Honesty comes a lot up in this passage. It's only one page. They are such unfortunates. They are not at fault. They have been born that way. They are naturally incapable of grasping and developing a manner of living which demands rigorous honesty. Their chances are less than average. There are those two who suffer from grave emotional and mental disorders. But many of them do recover if they have the capacity to be honest. Our stories disclose in a general way what we used to be like, what happened, and what we are like now. If you have decided what you want, what we have, you're willing to go to any length to get it, then you're ready to take certain steps, and that's the 12 steps of, of recovery. At some of these, we balked. We thought we could what our youngsters want to do today. They think there is, there's a thing called two-minute noodle recovery. Well, I can tell you there ain't. But we could not. With all the earnestness at our command, we beg of you to be fearless and thorough from the very start. Not fearless and thorough from the end or from the middle, from the start. Some of us have tried to hold on to our old ideas and the result was null until we let go absolutely. Let go. Remember that we deal with alcohol, drugs, cunning, baffling and powerful. Without help it is too much for us. But there is one who has all power. That one is God. May we find him now. And I found, you know, in, in, in the years and, and of drinking and drugging and, and being in the police and, and doing things that, we don't want to go into war stories now, doing things that weren't uh, acceptable. When I was full of alcohol and full of drugs, I couldn't care. I couldn't care. I've got into some houses of, because addiction doesn't discriminate. And I've seen very good houses bashed apart inside. It may look good from the outside, but the pain inside the house is indescribable. So many people are suffering from this. There is still a stigma attached to it, but that's slowly getting broken. The denial around it. God can do for us what we couldn't do for ourselves. Anyone who finds recovery will get recovery. Anyone who goes into a recovery center to play a game will not find recovery. And it's a lifelong, lifelong run. It's not, it's, it's, it's not, it's not difficult. It's just be honest. Be honest with one another. Be honest with yourself, like it said there. And you can find a new life. Anyone here back with any kind of addiction, prescription drugs or alcohol or, or the harder drugs, there is hope. You can find hope. 
I'm living proof of 15 years of recovery. Even with its ups and with its downs. And there has been many downs. But I had the choice to, I had to take the choice to pick up that makes me down and out. Or do I go over the bumps one day at a time? And one day at a I want to stay sober. Nothing else. Because if I stay sober, everything else will be added to it. So thank you for joining us on a Saturday night and spending your time an hour with that we could spend with each other. That was wonderful. We're under attack, but God knows better than we do. At least we've got a Savior, and in the end we will win. God's people will win. I just want to see if there's any messages here. Okay, got those, got those, okay. All right. Beautiful. All right, thank you very much, and uh, may you all keep keep warm tonight, keep safe. For anyone listening who's got a child out there, we pray God's warmth over them, to protect them, and that they may come to the and they may come to the realization that the life of drugging and alcohol is not what God wanted for us. All those things that are happening in the background behind the drugs and the alcohol, we pray that that sickness and that filth can leave our loved ones and loved ones around the world. I see we've got America back online, Scotland back online, that they can leave us all around the world. Let's fight back with love in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.